Hello there, and welcome to this episode of the MIDI CNC router build. Now this is the left-hand Y-axis, and of course left and right are actually different, uh, very slightly. Uh, one is the mirror image of the other and the x-axis is going to be pretty well identical to the right hand side of the y-axis but they're all virtually the same uh, it just means that the motor assembly uh, motor and, and screw is run the other way um, doesn't make any difference to the rails. Um, now, when you put this together, everything is governed by the top edge of this um, assembly or chassis. So the first job I have to do is to drill and tap and mount all the holes and the, the screws and bolts and attach this top rail um, because everything is you know sort of worked from that um, as in the clearance between this bearing block and this um, bearing as well uh, I want at least a, a millimeter clearance here um, top side and bottom side and it's, then, it's that that's going to give me the position of this lower rail uh, and I'll probably make a jig to fit in between here uh, so I can place in here um, clamp this down mark all the holes out, drill them all uh, and I can place a, a jig in here Really, it's just, a, I suppose, a you know, measuring block of some sort um, to make sure that I can screw this end in and then put the jig in down that end and screw that end up tight and know that these are absolutely parallel. Uh, you know, it's not going to jam up or anything like that or, you know, have any sort of tight areas. Um, so it's a little bit uh, fiddly, but um, it's not going to get done just by looking at it, is it? <laughs> okay, let's get on with it. I've decided to carry this project out as much as I can using this type of tools that any woodworker would have on hand in their workshop. So, with, with the exception, I've, I've got a piece of uh, uh, one inch by two inch aluminium bar here, left over from another project. Um, but, you, you could use a piece of the box section left over from uh, cutting the chassis parts, um, which I did on the last video. Uh, this would work the same. All I was after was a straight flat edge that I could clamp the the 60 by 10 aluminium plate up to. Then I've got just ordinary Irwin clamps actually, uh, clamping the rail up against it so I know that the rail and the plate, the, the top edge is exact, exactly parallel because it's all clamped up against this. Or a piece of good angle, angle, angle aluminium, that would be all right too. Um, and I'm actually using some leftover, this is uh, Mervo. Okay, quite an exotic wood, very, very hard. Uh, it's very, very straight. 
Um, I'm just using it really to pack it up off the bench and another piece to hold the two rails down. Um, I'm only using the second rail uh, to, <laughs> to be able to bridge across, you know, with a piece of merbu so I could clamp this one down. Okay, I'll give you a side view in a minute. And this is all clamped down to the bench. Because what I want to do is I just want to mark with a drill. Now the holes in the in the rail are four and a half millimeter. Um, so I've got a four and a half millimeter drill that I'm just gonna pop through the existing holes in the rail and mark the material underneath the, the 160 mil by 10 mil plate. Um, I want to put about four holes in, so I'm just going to mark in four places, then dismantle this, and then drill through it with a pretty ordinary drill press. This is what I've had for 30 years. Um, but this is the type of equipment, you know, this is all you really need. Um, I would say that... Um, it would be preferable to use a little drill press like this rather than hang on to your cordless drill and try and drill through nice and square. You can do it, but you know, I'm using minimal equipment here. Okay, um, so of course, when I've done that, then I can tap a thread in for these screws. Uh, and attach that top rail with the four screws, okay, and then I've got it solidly mounted that I can drill all the all the rest. Um, it's sort of going to be difficult for me to sort of uh, you know sort of mark every hole. I'd rather secure it with four first, check it all because it's not too late to alter things, and. Um, you know, then secure it and then mark it with a drill. So that's what we're going to do uh, next. But I'll, I'll give a side view first and so you can see that the, you know, might be able to see the layout here a little better. So all the setup is, is G clamps, Irwin clamps, and some leftover Mobu. And, you know, it's, it's, it's quite solidly mounted there. Um, and very accurately mounted here so I can mark those holes. Right, and again, simple setup. Um, so I've just got some blocks of uh, 90 by 35 actually this is um, and really just set them here just to hold this level or level as you can and we'll just sight this up that's about it there We'll just give it a little bit of WD-40 and we'll drill this one through. Better find the drill plugged in. what's commonly known as peck drilling so you peck it like a bird so you go through uh, about a, a millimeter sixteenth of an inch and then withdraw the drill back out and then put it in again another sixteenth of an inch or one millimeter uh, and you go through all the way like that the material coming off doesn't clag up on the end of the drill it doesn't weld itself to the drill because you don't give it 
long enough time to get too hot and you can clear the hole out and uh, that's the, the way to cut especially aluminium okay now cutting a thread in aluminium I always use WD-40 brilliant stuff put some in the hole like that not a, a great amount of it some on the tap now you've got to what I do is give it about two turns in then reverse and bring it back out to clean to clear out the hole and to clear uh, to, to actually break off the uh, the shads and get rid of them so we're pretty square there There you have a perfectly straight guide rail that is perfectly square with the top of that 60 by 10 main chassis member. I've now got both of these permanently on there and they're look they're parallel throughout their entire length plus or minus a couple of thou and you know about the closest I can get it um, which is is good enough and I have pre-assembled this now and I've got the um, preloading nut on here, bearings are all preloaded up and the little lock grub screw is done up. I've uh, got the circlip in on the end there so this is ready to go now. Uh, so now it comes the time to accurately position this and that's very easy thing to do. Now we know this is parallel and we know they're in the right place. Get my seat out of the way and you just simply, I've actually got a mark on here where it's supposed to go, um, but I know that the outer edge of this to this face here needs to be 100 millimeters or uh, four inches, which it is on that line. Now, to get this parallel with the you know the rest of it, you could either use the actual bearing blocks here 
and you know sort of accurately measure it or very simple method is I know that I want a six millimeter gap here or clearance you just get a, a six millimeter drill or an imperial you know if you're working in imperial use the imperial <laughs> equivalent and you just pop down between there and just press that up against in there like that and get him on the line there so you know that is exactly right but I'll just check it the clearance is going to be correct I mean it is it's, it's one and a half mil clearance but a sixteenth of an inch between here and the same with this end okay and as I've moved it best to recheck okay so we know that's right that is in the right place there's a double check it obviously measure the other end as well and this is exact oh, can't see me and this is the same measurement as well uh, four inches or 100 mil to the inside of this block to the end of the piece so now all I got to do is clamp it there in that position and just do some spot hole drills and then drill it to tap in size and tap thread in there so that's what we're going to do next. If you're going to do a job like this, do yourself a favour, especially if you're the wrong side of 60. Invest in a... I think I paid something like $35 for this. A digital vernier gauge, which will do inches and millimetres. It's a damn godsend, because I can't... You know, I can't read the divisions of thousands of an inch on a, a standard type, but uh, these are very easy to use. They tell you exactly what it is. And it's big enough letters so you can see as well. <laughs> okay, five millimeter, because we're gonna put a six millimeter bolt in this. Or set screw, I don't know what you wanna call them. Six millimeter. it would help if I was plugged in. Okay. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is one completed axis. Uh, in this case, this is the, uh, the left-hand Y axis. Um, 
Obviously the, the other side is going to be a, a mirror copy of this and the x-axis is going to be the same as that. So that's how to fairly accurately put an axis together with uh, linear guide rails and a zero backlash ball screw. Um, I'm not putting the the motor on until uh, very last um, because one major thing why is because what I asked for which was a five millimeter and an eight millimeter well, the eight millimeter fits okay but they sent me a six millimeter that end so renders these useless um, now that is one thing that you, you know, ordering from China, um, sometimes, you know, these things happen, I find, because it's not the first time it's happened to me, um, but there you go. Uh, nothing I can't um, um, machine up. I've got a CNC mill there and I've got a couple of lathes too. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm machine my own up. Um, I'll probably do away with the flexible part of it and I'll just get a bit of mole steel rod and um, machine one up myself. You know, no great drama. It's a shame, and you know, I would have liked to have used those, but hey, it doesn't matter. So, I think we'll draw this video to an end. And uh, don't forget, um, all the plans, when I've eventually drawn them up, um, and, and I don't want to draw them up until I get this actually run in and make sure everything runs perfectly, I'm sure it will, but I like to try it anyway before I put any plans up and you know someone copies it and copies my mistakes then. Uh, I don't want that to happen, so yeah, it's pretty straightforward, I think. So, uh, and don't forget, they will be available to patrons, okay? Um, and, you know, th this channel survives because of the patrons that support the channel. Because, uh, you know, since COVID and uh, certainly the online protection for children, which I'm, you know, I'm all in support of, of course all the ad revenue, or the major ad revenue has just gone away and uh, not likely to come back in a hurry either. So um, if you'd like to become a patron the information will be at the end of this uh, video in the credits and also below this video in the just below the, the description and uh, it would help you know the channel out an awful lot and help me to continue bringing you know content like this um, so uh, again thank you patrons for doing what you do and uh, thank you for potential patrons then as well and thank everybody for watching the video today please like and subscribe and um, now the next video, uh, you know, I don't want to repeat this. I, I'll, uh, you know, over the next week I'll build the others up um, like this as far as this. Um, but I think the next video that I make um, will be uh, on the CNC mill because I need to make um, a some sort of connection between this ball nut and the underside of, in this case, the upright arm for the gantry. Um, which I'm going to make out of uh, 25 millimeter, one inch by two inch bar stock aluminium. So I'll be you know, making probably a bit of a shape and um, you know boring the hole out 
on the inside and, and doing the drillings um, to connect you know to this and also the upright of the of the gantry and um, I still haven't received everything yet that I ordered I haven't received the the uh, spindle motor and I haven't received the controller yet and uh, as soon as I get it I'll you know, sort of show you but uh, I I think this is going to take me to make the other ones of these it's uh, not going to take me as long it's taken me to, I think two days really off and on to you know get to this stage so um, I think within a just over a week maybe I'll have all these finished and we'll be starting to see some sort of assembly I think but I shall make uh, some videos in between as well like um, you know, I think um, I've had a few people ask me um, a few questions about uh, the operation of the laser, the 100 watt laser, and uh, which I, I will address uh, with the video. And also I've had some uh, questions about the 3018 and the um, uh, they want to see more uh, in-depth 3D carving with that. So uh, I'll probably do a video on that as well. So anyway, thank you for joining me and um, we'll call this one uh, finished. <laughs> okay, so it's bye for now.